So, so Harold, thank you for making some time to uh, talk with me. Uh, we've known each other more than 10 years in this field of uh, free and open source software law. And I just wanted to ask you, what, what brought you here? I mean, you're, you're a high-level developer, you do a lot of stuff, you do kernel development, you're doing development around mobile telephony. What brought you into free and open source software law? Yeah, it's not really a particularly voluntary choice. It's more like necessity that I felt that brought me to uh, open source and free software legal issues in the sense that um, I, my primary motivation as a developer is uh, to write software that is free and that remains uh, free. That's why the code that I write is licensed under GPL or other copyleft licenses. So I don't want anyone to make a copy and, and run away with that and create their own proprietary derivative version. So um, in 2003, 2004, we were seeing the first um, router devices, uh, Wi-Fi routers, home consumer electronic router devices, uh, that were using Linux, including Netflix Drivey tables, of which uh, some part I wrote, um, and they were not complying with the GPL. And as such, I uh, had to get involved uh, to make sure that the license is followed in this context. How about uh, in the last, well, that's about 13 years dealing with this legal stuff now, um, what's the biggest or most interesting thing you've seen with free and open source software legal issues? You know, has there been one thing that struck you as big or important? Well, I mean, maybe it goes back to the beginning, because in the beginning when I started doing this uh, actual enforcement of the GPL, there was still a lot of doubt whether it can be done at all. Um, so people at that point were talking about, oh, you know, this is not possible and the GPL cannot be enforced and cannot be enforced under German law or American law or whatever. And basically, that we have moved beyond that point, I think, is a very important step that by now we know, uh, like any other license, like for any other copyrighted work, the GPL can also be legally enforced if it is necessary to do so and if all other methods fail. That's actually a really good point, because I, I came into the field about 2004 as well, and at that time my perception was there was a real question about enforceability. Yeah. And people have somehow, in some ways, forgotten that nowadays, because we just accept it as a norm. But it was a sea change, it was a, like, a point of maturity. Yes, correct. And there were also some people who were afraid at the time, you know, things could go wrong and we could get as a result, no, it is not enforceable, but anyway, we, we have that clarity now for quite some time and it is uh, uh, normal now. So what, what do you think is coming next? What's the next big thing or interesting development in the next 12 or 24 months in this field? Actually, I don't have a good idea <laughs> what... Uh, what uh, is next? I mean, we see all kinds of threats to free software in, in the legal sphere. Um, one topic that I'm personally very much uh, interested in is the Radio Equipment Directive in the European Union, which uh, tries to lock down uh, the radio receiving and or transmitting devices in a way that might make it impossible for free software to be installed on such devices. Um, that's, I think, a, a legal topic uh, related to free software that I'm interested in. That's a, a very good point. And I, I guess for some people who um, are looking at free software law, they might get surprised to think of these new areas. Like you're looking at this directive, you know, you, what's on the radar isn't simply how do I comply with XYZ license. There's a whole range of issues. It's a very broad field. Yeah, yeah, it is. And it's also the other way around that the people who are like policy makers and so on, they are not all familiar yet with how free software works. So they might design laws and regulations and rules that uh, are not uh, uh, friendly towards free software, uh, even unintentionally. Thank you very much for your time, Harold. I really appreciate it. Thank you.